Okay, so um, a really common operation in Unity is creating objects uh, in your game at runtime. So basically, what that means is um, you've started playing the game and you've uh, maybe created a few different objects um, as prefabs or what have you, and now you want to bring them in, uh, bring them to life. Um, that's what we're going to do in this example. And right now I have one script called Move My Object. It's a pretty simple script. Basically, um, it has a bunch of if else statements for movement. So we get keys like the left arrow, the right arrow, the up arrow, down arrow. And then we do a, a transform.translate in the direction uh, that we have. So if we go ahead and look at that, we can move up, back, left and right, all relative to where the cube is. So that's good enough. Um, and I've added one line of code here at the very top called object to spawn. This um, exposes a variable in the editor so that uh, our movement script can now um, create objects on the fly. So it doesn't have anything there right now, so we're going to create something really quickly, and then we're going to write the code that actually instantiates that object. So, in the hierarchy, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a game object. Let's create a sphere. Okay, I'll scale it down a little bit. So the only thing I'm going to do to this sphere really is give it a rigid body so it's a physics object in the world. So we'll go to component, physics, rigid body, and you'll see in the inspector pane that it now indeed does have a rigid body. Um, finally, I'm going to, uh, that's good enough right now, but now I'm going to create a prefab, and I'm going to call it my sphere. Uh, the reason we're doing this is to just show that you can sort of build your objects out in the hierarchy, give them all sorts of components and properties, what have you, and then turn them into prefabs. Now if I can delete this from the scene hierarchy, but I also still have it in my project as an object. <clears throat> this is going to be useful so that now we can take a look at the script that's on our cube move my object script and we see that it says object to spawn missing it needs a game object so we're gonna go ahead and give it one we'll click and drag the my sphere into object to spawn there now it has a reference to uh, what it needs to create uh, at runtime the problem is is that we're not we haven't uh, come up with any code yet that's actually going to create it for us so Let's go back into the Move My Object script. Um, basically, all we really want to do here is if the user has pushed a button, we want to go ahead and spawn our object to spawn. And it turns out to be pretty easy. What we can do is create a new variable called object, and we can give it a game, we give it a type, so game object, and we set it equal to and this is the function, the big function that's going to do all the magic for us, uh, instantiate. Um, instantiate has three, three uh, parameters. It takes the object that we want to spawn, so luckily we named that pretty well. It takes a position as a vector and a rotation as a quaternion. Typically with this kind of thing, the position and and rotation are coming from um, maybe the object that this script is attached to. So in this case, our cube. Um, but they don't have to. It can it can pretty much be from anywhere. Um, and there's plenty of different situations where you would want that to be the case. Well, what I'm going to do is actually make it spawn in front of our cube by maybe just a slight offset to the position. So I'll type in transform.position which again is a, a vector 3 so if I want to give it an offset I then need to add that vector to a new vector 3 um, <coughs> and we'll say I don't know we'll give it an offset of 5 on the ah, 5 seems a bit big we'll say 2 on the X 
this is the this is actually the world X so um, to be aware of that and then finally we'll give it a rotation and that we can just give from the object that the script is attached to so now we have the object but we only want this to actually be instantiated um, if the user has pushed down a key otherwise if we were to leave this in here right now which might be a fun we'll go ahead and do that we'll, we'll hit save and we'll hit play and you're going to see a ton of objects being spawned um, and they're being spawned every update so uh, you can you can sort of see that the where they're uh, spawning from is the offset we've given them but that's this result is not preferable um, so let's go back into the script and we'll say if input dot get key down um, <clears throat> This is important that the key is down because it's only going to return um, once uh, the second the, the key is pressed in. If we used get key and gave it something, then we would actually still end up with a similar problem um, as we just had. So we'll say get key down and give it whatever key code you want. I'm going to use spacebar. And finally, um, we have our line. Now, the reason that we do this var object, game object equals instantiate, you might say, well, hey, can't I just, you know, get rid of this part and, and call instantiate? Yeah, you actually can. But um, if the object has maybe, say, some data that you want to initialize, like you wanted to write something like, say, object dot, you know, uh, some parameter equals some value. Um, right when it's instantiated, maybe give it a force or something like that. Um, in fact, we could probably do that right now just for the sake of argument. We do have a rigid body attached to um, our sphere. So we'll say object dot add force and we'll give it a vector 3 which is our force uh, we'll do 10 or 3 we'll do it a lot less so it doesn't look too weird so now we've added a force in some direction to our object that we're going to spawn when we press space let's go ahead uh oh add force is not a member that's because I'm calling it on the object and I need to be calling it on the rigid body there we go. Add force. Hopefully that will work. Okay, we we'll go ahead and play. Now we can move our object around. Let's hit space. And you can see it's spawning based on our offset. It's not giving much of a force. Let's see if we can make that a little bit clearer. Huh. I wonder if I'm actually giving that the right. Oops. Add force. Huh. Vector three. Oh, uh, well, I don't know. It's not a very big force. I'm convincing myself this isn't working. That's better. You're getting something there to compare if we take the force away completely and we also take this line away we can see that it still works but the result is that there is no force to start out with again these are physics objects so when I spawn a physics object in the 
right where another physics object exists, it creates a collision, and you get this result. So we can keep doing this. And pressing space a lot just to prove that it works. And that's it. That's the secret to spawning an object at runtime.